Hello, everybody. Take over Club Bruges, who have just been crowned Belgium champions for the 18th time. However, in Europe, they have been agonizingly knocked out in the semi-finals of the Conference League against Fiorentina. And so today's task of Mr. Rebuild Sombrero is to take over this Club Bruges side and not only confirm them as the best team in Belgium, but to build a dynasty and ultimately try to win them their first ever UEFA Champions League crown. First off, we have Van Aken, our best player. He's 30 years of age, the captain, 80 rated in the camp. Then we have very talented fullbacks in Maya, 2073. Sabi, 1867. We have an experienced goalkeeper in Simon Miganole, 35, 79 rated. Pick of the bunch here. A very talented left winger, left midfielder in Antonio Nusa, the Norwegian. He is 18 and 72 rated already, so quite a young team and a lot of talent in it. One thing that's really important to me is setting up a youth network. For nine months, we are going to send Dylan Koylemans to Belgium. The first player that is leaving us is Derek Boyata. He's coming on with age 1.1 million to Anderlecht. We further proceed by selling Shion Homa to Swansea City for 1.3 million. I want to use the gegenpressing style of play here as we are one of the most dominant teams in the league. I want us to press the life out of every opponent. Nick Shinton for 1.5 million, our third string goalkeeper. Nielsen's position from a CM to a CDM and he goes up by one to a 75. Somebody will replace Simon Mignolet in a swap deal with this man. It is Martin van der Voort coming in from KERC gang for Simon Mignolet plus 7 million, around about 7 million and he's a 76 overall, he's 21 years of age we still have about 23 million in our budget to go in for two more players because we have, of course, a rule that we cannot sign more than three players per season. Brentford wants Govoldsen, but he is one of our most valuable players, so that is a no from me and we immediately block that offer. We then sell a rotational yeah, backup CDM. It is Eder Balanta going to Celtic, he was 30 years of age, 1.8 million. So lads, I've changed this formation to a 4-3-3 on defend with wingers and with two CDMs, one cam, Van Aken. Certainly what jumps to my eye is that we don't have any cam in neither the substitutes nor the reserves. So that is a position that we sh certainly should attack. It is a player who formerly already played in Belgium. He knows the league. Bilal El Canus in this save joining us from Real Sociedad for 14 million. He will give competition to Hans Van Aken, our captain, and certainly overtake him in a few years' time. Third and final signing of season number one is for one of the biggest prospects in Belgian football, in the Belgian league also. Zeno Debas joining us for 6 million on the dot. And Debas, one of the biggest talents in Belgian football, is a 74 rated upgrade on our current centre-back Spielers. Now we have a very competitive team with of course Van der Voort, our new goalkeeper, 21-75 overall. Seno de Bast, 1973, both of them immediately in the starting 11. And El Canus, the man for the future here, 19 years of age, 74 overall, he will take Van Aken's place in the future seasons. Of course, just like La Bruges in real life, we will be playing Europa Conference League football in season number one here, alongside Bodo Glimp, Besiktas and Lugano. But we are leading the way in the Belgian Pro League by one point ahead of Anderlecht and 11 ahead of Genk in third. It is a two-horse race for the Pro League title in the first season here. And in a very close affair in Group D in the Conference League, we have qualified a second place team behind Besiktas on same points than them, three points ahead of Bodo Glimt from Norway, to play in the preliminary round against a tricky opposition in Panathinaikos from Greece. Stats so far dominated by Hans Van Aken, 14 goals in 24 appearances for a camp. 
Skovoldsen is second with 8 goals and 2 assists, but the others aren't really delivering that much. Shudla and Igor Thiago, 22 years of age, 78 rated, plus 3. Not bad growth, but 6 goals are a bit mad. Just like that, we have made the sale of Josef Bursik in the winter transfer window. He's gone to Luton Town as our fourth string goalkeeper. One goalkeeper out, one goalkeeper in, as we have signed Dario Verstrete from, of course, the Youth Academy, 83 to 94 potential. Here come positional changes. It is Andreas Kovolsen from a right midfielder to a right winger, and he goes up by one. Same goes for Antonio Nuza from a left midfielder to a left winger, and he goes up from a 74 to a 76, up by two. We sell Philipp Zinka-Nagel for 11 million to Real Sociedad for next season. Jutla to Leipzig for 21 million. He wanted to leave the club. At the end of the Pro League regular season, we have been in first place 10 points ahead of Anderlecht, but in the playoffs the points will be halved in Belgium. And in the championship round, we won 5 points ahead of Royal Antwerp in second, Ghent in third and Anderlecht down in fourth place. The cup, however, goes to Ghent over Anderlecht in the final, and we have been knocked out to Ghent in the quarterfinals, so no Croaky Cup, no Belgium Cup in the first season. The Conference League goes to Bergamo Calcio, Atalanta over Fenerbahce, and we have been knocked out in the round of 16 to Aston Villa 5-4 on aggregate. The Europa League goes to Real Sociedad over Napoli 2-1. And quite an interesting, surprising Champions League final goes to Milan 1-0 over Porto from Portugal. Hans Van Aken has really delivered 17 goals, 8 assists, Thiago, Igor Thiago up to a 79, 17 goals for him as well. But then the drop-off here is massive. Behind those two Van Aken and Thiago, we have Judla with 10 goals, Skovolsen with five, 9 goals and 3 assists. We need more, especially from the likes of Antonio Nusa, who's gotten up by 7, incredible growth. 1979 rated, but he needs to deliver concerning the stats. Our manager rating is in the bin as well. 41, critical, we could get sacked at any moment. We start off season number two by selling Romeo Vermont to KAA Gent for 3.85 million. We sell Roman Yaremchuk, who returned from loan for 2.75 million to Braga in Portugal. Just like selling Oven. Ota Zovi for 1.3 million. We further enhanced the clear out by selling Faitud Mausa, who returned from loan now for 10.3 million. Apparently bad negotiations, but 10 million in the books aren't bad. A man whose release clause had been met has been sold. He was on loan last season. Kamal Sova goes to Besiktas for 4.5 million. We sell Sisse Sandra for 2.9 million. He was surplus to requirement. Another man leaving the club. He was out on low last season. He doesn't really have a lot of potential. It is Victor Barbera joining Famalicao for 3 million on the dot. Our squad is really thin, especially the depth. We don't have any reserves left. We have neither a winger nor a striker on the bench. That shows you how bad the squad depth of this team is right now. So we'll have to go in for at least the winger and the striker. Unbelievable. 98 million after having about 20 last season. That is, of course, after all those sales we've made. So let's. Our first signing of season number two is for a very talented Belgian CDM from Chelsea. It is Romeo Lavia joining us for 12 million on the dot from the English Giants. And he will be about a 76 overall very good squad player in that CDM spot. As the second signing of this season, we bring back a Belgian prodigy. We save him from Saudi Arabia, coming into the building of Club Bruges is Yannick Carrasco for 48.5 million. He scored in the Champions League fin final, remember. So not a bad player by any stretch of the imagination. Entering the building here at Club Bruges from Bayer Leverkusen. I never said it was going to be a realistic rebuild. But certainly, a man who has made himself a name outside of Belgium. We have Victor Boniface coming in for Igor Thiago plus 25 million. In a swap deal, with money, a very good deal for us. The marksman of this team, 82 rated, with Boniface in the striker position and Carrasco on the left wing. We have a superb upgraded team, a team that is ready to compete for every title there is. 
But certainly, a team that is still young in defense, Maya 21-77, Debas 20-77, Sabe 19-72, Onyedika in the CDM position 23-79, and Lavia we bought here, of course, 20-75. I was a bit surprised that we didn't have to go through any playoffs. We are immediately into Champions League Group E as the Belgian champions, alongside Bayern Munich, Aston Villa and AS Monaco in the absolute group of death. We are actually not in first place in the Pro League in Belgium. We are in second, three points behind Underleg, four points, five points ahead actually of Charleroi. But yes, we have to strap ourselves in in that second part of the season. In Group E of the Champions League, we have made it through with ten steady points, three wins out of six games, one draw, two losses. Alongside Bayern Munich, who have topped that group in flying colors, Monaco, and Aston Villa have been knocked out of the Champions League. And in the round of 16, we will be facing Porto. So no Inter, no Manchester City, no PSG, Bayern, of course not. No Juve, Arsenal or Milan. We have gotten the most manageable draw, I'd say. And certainly, after the first part of the season, the stats are looking better than last year. Because we have Nusa, top spot, 11 goals in 25 games, our wonder kit, 19 years of age still. Let's not forget that. We have Boniface, who immediately clicks in the Belgian League. He's up to an 85, 24 years of age, 10 goals in 27 appearances. We have Van Nacken once again, 32 years of age, still an 83 rated, 9 goals, 7 assists. We go into the game against Porto here, at home, at the Brugge Stadium. We have a full strength start in 11. Can we create a first upset in the Champions League? By kicking out Porto or by defeating them at home. Let's see. We lose 2-1. Pepe and Abel Ruiz score for Porto and Don Yedica gave us the equalizer but it just wasn't enough. In the end we lose narrowly. Stadio do Dragao. We go in Porto without a lot of hope of course. But still we give our all and maybe we can snatch something. The answer to that is actually no but it was so close. It was so, so, so close. We lost on penalties after winning in the 90 minutes. We were 1-0 up to Carrasco. Abel gave them the equalizer. Skovolsen gave us another lead. It went all the way through extra time. Nothing happened there. And then in the penalty shootout, the Koipa missed and Van Aken missed. We could have gone through, but we get knocked out agonizingly close to Porto. So let's, at the end of the regular season in the Pro League in Belgium, we finish in second place, but look at those points. 74 Anderlecht, 69 for Brugge, for us, and then Antwerp. Three teams in the title running, but who did it? That is the big question. It was Royal Antwerp doing it. Same points, 52, then us. What an interesting championship round. And what a league, we come second. We just miss out on a back-to-back, -back, on a second league title in a row. In the Kroki Cup, however, we beat Gang in the first round. But then lost to Mechelen. Why Mechelen? Why them? They are not a good team. And the cup goes to Antwerp over Mechelen in the final. So Antwerp wins this. We don't win that Kroki Cup. We have an allergy to that cup so far. The Champions League goes to Manchester City over Juventus 2-1 in the final. While the Europa League goes to a surprising Fenerbahce who beat Chelsea from England 2-1. And this rebuild is already very unrealistic because both of those contenders here in the Conference League, I can understand Spurs, but they never win the final. They are never in the Conference League, Real Madrid. And here they are in it and they lose to Spurs. So all realism has just gone out of the window. Victor Boniface tearing this league apart. Alongside Nusa, Skovolsen, Karasko and Van Aken, those five players are the real deals here. All above our 80 rated, of course. Nusa up to an 83 with 20 years of age. He might be the pick of the bunch. We don't have a very, very good squad depth, but the squad we do have is excellent. Absolutely excellent. Maybe we upgrade on our centre-backs. Mechele is 32-77. Spilers didn't really develop as much as I wanted him to. We have Van de Voort in net, still very good. Lavia up to a 77, Van Aken still 83. Skovolsen up to an 84, still only 25 years of age. 
Boniface, as I already said, 2485, our best scorer. Quick update on the Youth Academy, where we've found pl five players. This one here, Lunkfist or Linkfist, is from the default Youth Academy at the beginning. And then the Ridder is maybe the pick of the bunch alongside Janssen. Those two, we have the Smith here as they camp, 77, 94 potential, but these two, Janssen, 86 to 92 potential, and Ridder, 86 to 94 potential, are the, the best ones here. But oh well, lads, I'm not really convinced by this second season. Although we reached a round of 16 of the Champions League, which is good, we didn't win the league, and we also couldn't win the Croaky Cup. Let's see where we even go in which European competition. I'm not so sure yet. We'll see that in season number three. We kick off season number three by selling Jorne Spilers to Bournemouth. He wanted to leave the club. A backup striker. One of Belgium's finest prospects. It is George Ilenikena entering the bail building for 6 million plus. A player, B. Abdul Amer. And I don't even know his last name. A player who returned from loan. It is Bill Abdul Kader Yameogo plus 6 million. We make another big sale. It is Hugo Vetlesen, our backup CDM who goes for 20 million off to Napoli. And we will still have about 70 million to go in for new players for season number three. What I certainly do want in this club is a better center back than Mekele who is 32 now. Another player who I'm really mad at because he wanted out of the club as well. I don't know why these players all want out of the club, but Martin van de Voort wanted to Monaco for 45 million. At least we get some money out of him. Maybe it was a blessing in disguise that we had to sell Martin van de Voort. Because like that, we can easily go in for one of the world's best goalkeepers from Belgium as well. It is Thibaut Courtois entering the building here at Club Bruges for 33 million. Courtois came in from Real Madrid and he of course is at an overall of 90, so an absolute star, a goalkeeper. Last but not least, in this third transfer season, we go in for a star centre-back, as we go in for the French sensation, from Spurs in this safe, but in real life he comes from Liverpool. It is Ibrahima Konate joining us for 60 million, and with of course Courtois, Konate, Ilenikena on the bench here, we have a fantastic squad now. The bust still developing. Konate, the world-class player he is. And our front tree is already world-class. 85, 85 and 84 rated. Good midfield. Hopefully Lavia can grow more this season. All right, lads. Here we go. We have to play in the playoffs to, of course, qualify for the Champions League in season number three here at the start. Can we get a first good result against Celtic at home? In our first qualifying game here. Yes, we do. We win 2-1. Nusa and the Koipa score. A few players are still tired. Konate, Lavia, and even Van Aken, Sabe and Skovolsen. But can we get through at Celtic Park here in the second leg of the playoffs? Yes, we do. We win 3-1. A Carrasco brace and the goal by Skovolz and give us the edge 5 to 1 aggregate comfortably in the end. We will have to go through a second round of qualifiers here and this time it's Feyenoord our opponent. I don't know what's happened to Lavia why he's never in form. But oh well, let's just concentrate on getting a good result against the Dutch team, against the Dutch Giants from Rotterdam. Can we do it? Yes, we win 2 1. After being down 1-0, Boniface and Carrasco turned the game around. So we've had a good stretch of results so far in the Champions League. But now, at Rotterdam in the Netherlands. Can we finalize it? Can we reach the group stages of the Champions League? That is the question. Let's go. With a full strength starting 11. In Rotterdam, we draw the game. It's 1-0 and we go through to the group stages of the UCL in season number 3. And in a Champions League group we will be in Group G alongside Manchester City, Real Sociedad and Fenerbahce. Another very, very difficult, very tough group. At the halfway point of season number 3, we absolutely dominate the Belgian Pro League. 53 points after 21 games, 10 points ahead of KRC Gang. It's not so good news as we have been grouped as third place 15 points wins Manchester City the, grou the group here. Real Sociedad in second with 10 points and we are far adrift 
in third place, one ahead of Fenerbahce in fourth. This was a very hard group and we at least get out to the Europa League. And in the preliminary round of the Europa League, we'll be facing Bodo Glimt from Norway. Carrasco has scored 10, Olsen 9, Boniface 9, Ilinikena his backup 9, and even Nusa 8 and the, from return from loan returning Chems Dine also with 6 goals, Banaken with 10 assists not too bad and De Kuiper for a left back 4 goals not too bad either. In the regular season we've actually topped the league but only by 3 points, we were ahead by 10 when we first checked in after 20 games so we must have lost a lot of games yes I see 7 defeats in the playoffs. We won it and we did win it here once again by 10 points, 7 wins, 2 draws, 1 loss. So when it really mattered, we came in clutch here and we quite clearly dominated that championship round here. The Belgium Cup, the Crookie Cup, we defeated Sporting Charleroi in the first round 2-1. Quarterfinals, we defeated Cercle Bruges on penalties. And then court strike 4-3 on aggregate must have been a two-legged affair. And in the final, we beat Ken to win our first Brokey Cup in the three seasons here. With, of course, Club Rouge in the Europa League. In the preliminary round here, we defeated Bodo Glim 3-1 on aggregate, which meant that we went through to the round of 16 where we defeated Marseille 3-1 from France, not bad. In the quarters, ah, in the quarters, the adventure came to an end as we were defeated by Juventus from Italy. Once again, Italian friends. Who have also gone on to win the whole tournament. So Juventus over Galatasaray in the final. The Conference League goes to Chelsea over Athletic Bilbao. While the Champions League in a star-studded final goes to Bayern Munich over PSG. Carrasco with 21 goals, 8 assists. Our best scorer by a mile, Skowolsen with 15 goals as well as Boniface and Ilenikena, both strikers. But uh, Skowolsen, an impressive right wing up to an 85 as well. What a player. A successful season here in the third year with Club Bruges. We of course have won the league, we've won the cup and we have been to a European quarterfinal in the Europa League. Knocked out by the eventual winners Juventus. But next season of course we will be qualified immediately to the Champions League. We sign a new backup goalkeeper, probably the Keilo Navas region because he's from Costa Rica. It is Fabricio Aguilar joining us from the free agency list for zero pounds. We sell one of the main staples of this team, he's 33 now, the, on the decline. It is Brandon Michele going off to Leicester City, getting a bit of English experience, six million we got into our bank. Second, we sell Dario Verstrete, our third string goalkeeper now to Everton as we have sealed the deal for a new right back from Bayern Munich it is Sasha Bowie coming into the club for a record 65 million euros what a transfer sum he's at 86 overall great first 11 right back we will sign a rotational center back as Michele has left us we go in for a Belgian center back 26 years of age seven younger than Michele as I said from Inter Milan for 5.4 million only. A bargain pickup. Bowie at the right back position. We have Van Hoisden here on the bench 26.75 and Aguilar in goal as a backup goalkeeper 18.75 an exciting prospect. Of course be playing Champions League football once again this time in a group alongside Spurs, Frankfurt and Copenhagen. All right, lads, at the halfway point of season number four, we are ahead once again, three points out of Underleg in second. Genk is in third. It's still a very, very close title running. In the Champions League, however, not so great, not so good. Once again, in third place, we've only won one game. We've also only lost one game. We've drawn four, just like Spurs. And we are on same points than the bottle jobs. But we are going to the Europa League and they are going through to the Champions League round of 16. This really annoys me because we were ready. We were ready this season in the Champions League. But we didn't make it out and so we have to face the pre preliminary round of the Europa League against Rangers. Stats are dominated by Skoff Olsen. 11 goals, 2 assists by him. Boniface, 8 goals in 20 games. He has to step his game up a little bit. Van Aken still with 8 goals, 2 assists. And then a little, little bit of a drop-off here. Tunuza, 5 goals. Carrasco, 4. 
Tell me three. The Lenikena really doesn't have any excuse. Let's go, lads. Let's give it your all in the second part of the season. We've actually only finished in second. One point behind Underlect, so we had a bit of a bad patch in the second half of the season. And in those playoffs, we tanked the league. Eight wins, two draws, zero losses. Ahead of Underlect, four wins and six losses for them. 14 points we overcame them with. And that is how we become champions once again here in Belgium in season number four. The Belgium Cup, we overcame Leuven in the first round, 3-2 narrowly. Oh no, we lost out to KAA Ghent in the quarterfinals, 2-1 at home. And the Croaky Cup goes to Anderlecht over Union saint Gilwas in the final 3-2 in our Europa League campaign. We didn't overcome the preliminary round against Rangers of all teams. We won away as it seems. We must have won like 3-1 at Rangers ground. But then we got tanked 5-1 at home. What a humiliation that is. And goes to Atletico Madrid 3-0 over Fiorentina. A bit of a niche finally in the Champions League where Leverkusen beats Spurs of all teams 3-1. And finally Roma win their second ever Europa Conference League defeating Union Berlin 5-4 on penalties. 19 goals for him up to an 86 at 27 years of age. What a gem he is, Andreas Kovolsen. We have Victor Boniface up to an 88, 17 goals for him. He's really came in clutch this season. And even our backup now backup scam... Van Aken, the former captain with 13 goals, still 6 assists. Nusa with 11 goals. And our backup striker, Ile Nikena, with 9 goals in 30 appearances. So it has been disappointing, as you can also see on the manager rating that is in the red. So we'll have to be careful not to get sacked here. But in season number 5, I want to see improvements all over the park. Especially in terms of results, because this team is really good. At the start of season number 5, I have changed the formation. Because we now play still in a 4-3-3, but more offensive. We two, with two cams and one CDM. Another big budget this season. Ida, who came back from a loan spell. From, of course, the Youth Academy of Belgium. Right winger, 79 rated, 19 years of age. He is now on the bench. One of the best players in the world in real life. And he joins us from PSG, it's a Belgian magician. Of course, strength in that central midfield spot. He comes in, surrounded by a lot of hype. Returning to Belgium. And getting greeted by Rebuild Sombrero. It is Kevin De Bruyne joining us for 45 million on the dot. He's 37, but still 87 rated. The second transfer. Another midfielder to just strength in the middle of the park here. Joining the club here as a crucial first team player. His contract was running down in 11 months. Ruben Neves in a swap deal with Finesse Bayern. He came in from Bayern for 25 million plus Yannick Carrasco, a 33 year old 81 Carrasco on the decline. And Ruben Neves is 30 years of age, 86 rated. As I said, his contract was expiring. And Meyer is now the captain of this side. He's one of the OGs, 24, 82 rated. He absolutely deserves that. But anyways, this team is absolutely fantastic. It's on fire. Then fives Champions League once again in Group B alongside Manchester United, Sporting and Sparta Pra in the first part of season number five. We're only in fifth place, 14 whole points behind Underlegged in first. We've already lost four games and drawn seven, just too much. We have reached the round of 16 after finishing second. As I said, Manchester United would finish first, and so they did. We finished in second, three points out of Sparta Prague in third. And Sporting actually had a shocker here. And in the round of 16, we'll have a very tough opposition in Bayern Munich. Oh my. And I can understand why we have done poorly in the league so far. Nine goals, top scorer Nusa and Eleni Kena. Skovolsen with 6 goals, Boniface only with 5 goals as our main man, 90 overall, 5 goals is just too weak so far of the round of 16 in season number 5. Can we upset Bayern Munich here at home? I'd say they are the favourites but we have a very good team here as well. No player under the overall of 81. Can we take advantage of the first leg of the home leg here in Bruges against Bayern? We win 2-0! Oh my god, 
We actually defeat Bayern Munich against all odds. It is Nusa and Boniface scoring the goals. Can we take advantage of our 2-0 lead from the home leg? We simulate the game with a full strength start in 11. The result is a 1-0 win. Kevin De Bruyne scores. And we take Bayern apart on aggregate 3-0. We will be facing AC Milan. I love my Italians and the game knows it. Club Bruges against AC Milan. First leg at home once again. Can we get a vital advantage over Milan in the first leg? That is the question. The answer to that is yes. We win 2-0. Once again a 2-0 home win. It is Kevin De Bruyne who even missed the pen in the 14th minute. But he gave us the lead in the 9th. And Skov Olsen, our star man in the 75th minute scored the final goal of, of the game it is the second leg of the quarterfinals we lead 2-0 after the first leg in Bruges against the Italian giants of AC Milan can we pass to the semi-finals it is squeaky bum time can we do it away here yes we win once again we've won all four matches so far in the knockout stages we've won 3-2 Boniface scored in the second minute. Kalulu gave them the equalizer. Skovolsen and Nusa gave us the other goals. And we win 5-2 on aggregate against the Italian giants. AC Milan. We are really a top dog in Europe right now. We will face Real Madrid. The kings of Europe. First off at the Estadio Santiago Bernabeu. Look at our team. Even though Kevin De Bruyne has gone down to an 84. What an insane team. Can we get something here? Away in the first leg at the Santiago Bernabeu in the semi-finals. It's a draw. It's 1-1. But he saves us our right back for, of all people. In the 86th minute with the equalizer after La Taza gave Madrid the lead. All to play for in the second leg. Can we overcome Real Madrid after the draw in the first game? A very good result at the Bernabeu. But will it help us in any way, shape or form at home? We'll see that here. Can the Belgian club, Club Bruges, get to the Champions League final for the first time in their history? In the fifth season of this rebuild, we quick sim the game. And we win 3-2! We are into the Champions League final! With Club Bruges in season number 5. La Taza gave Madrid the lead in the 22nd minute. Nusa with the equalizer in the 32nd. De Bruyne, the man we bought at the beginning of the season with... The goal immediately after halftime in the 46th. La Taza with his brace with, for Madrid in the 62nd. But Boniface with the dagger, with the deciding goal. And it fits really that it's Boniface because he's been the man of this rebuild so far. At the end of the regular season, we finished in second place as expected. Eight points only behind Anderlecht. So we made up a little bit of ground. In the championship round, we made up even more ground. Losing only one game, we are one point behind Underlect, and there is one game to go and guess who it is against. Of course, against RCS Underlect. Atomi against Underlect. Even though we were so far behind in the league, can we clinch it on the last match day? Here we go. We simulate it. We win 2 1. We are champions. Oh my, Boniface and Skovolsen, the OGs of this rebuild with the goals. Skovolsen, of course. From the default setup of Club Bruges. We are the top dogs once again. And I'm really proud of the boys. Because we were so far behind. In the Kroki Cup. We beat Kazoipen in the first round 2-0. Before beating Royal Antwerp 3-1 in the quarters. But then we got knocked out on away goals against Standard Liège. We lost the second leg 3-0. Oh my what a bottle job. Kroki Cup is underlegged over Standard Liège 3 2 in the final. In the Champions League final, we will be facing the English Giants, the record champions of England, Manchester United. Having a quick glance here at the stats before the final, Boniface destroyed the league this season. 20 goals for him, 15 for Nusa, Ileni Kena, the backup striker, with 14 as well, up to an 81. Skov Olsen up to an 88, 11 goals for him. And even De Bruyne who has gone down by 3, 8 goals, 7 assists, very steady for him. But for now, let's jump into the Champions League final at the Olympiastadion between Club Bruges and Manchester United.
Manchester United, but we defend that well, then we give it back inside, and then it's a penalty. How is that a pen? I'm sorry. Can we please have a look at this again? How is this a penalty? I'm sorry. What was that? He played the ball. Toiland against Courtois, he scores. It's 1-0 to United. Sasha Bowie, very, very attentive here. Into Skovolsen, Skovolsen. Into Canus, Canus with a good ball into Boniface. Can he go? One on one with the keeper, scores! Victor Boniface, the Nigerian. Our star man. What a play here by Bilal El Canus. He assists for him and then outside the boot finish. Very, very calm, collected and cold by Boniface who will make the next step towards glory. Maybe Manchester United towards Olise with a crazy trickery here. It's Michael Olise, he doesn't do himself any favors here, but then, good turn again, back inside, it's 2-1 for United. It's, go it's raining goals right now. 2-1, Manchester United. I think it's Alvarez. I mean, we couldn't stop Michael Olise here on the wing. And then, just too much space for Alvarez, no chance for our goalkeeper Thibaut Courtois. For the second half, we make a few changes. It is De Bruyne coming in to play alongside El Canus in, of course, that cam position. Neves is the only CDM now because Onyedika has gone out of the game to, of course, be replaced with the main man, Kevin De Bruyne, who had been on the bench at the beginning of the game. Now we need more creativity and that's why... De Bruyne is the man. We defend well here. It's Kevin De Bruyne into El Canus, who was good in the first half. Now he can send away Victor Boniface. Can he go once again? One on one! He does! It's a brace by Victor Boniface! Again, a superb pass here by Bilal El Canus. And a fantastic cold finish. Even better than the first one here. Victor Boniface. What a game we have on our hands here. It's 2 all, And we are only in the 51st. Antonio Nusa now. Can we gather some momentum? It's Antonio Nusa against Lima. He gets past him. Interesting. It's De Bruyne. It's a goal. We turn the game around within minutes. 3-2 to Club Bruges. What a play by Antonio Nusa. And... What a cold finish by De Bruyne. We are so, so clinical here. Especially in the second half. The introduction of Kevin De Bruyne has really changed this game. Ah, Garnacho does Bowie here. And then, careful, goes inside. But we, we defend well through Zeno de Bast. But we lose the ball immediately. Once again, it's Hoyland. Rasmus Hoyland sees Olise, Michael Olise. But De Bast once again. Nusa, we lose the ball sloppily now for the third time in a row here. Oh my, we let Manchester United into it like that again. We can not defend in this moment in time. It's Bowie though. Well, does well against Garnacho. Can we now hold the ball for more than two seconds? No. Oh my god. Since our lead, we've been so sloppy in possession. And now Maya, Courtois, just fires it away. Now we can go on the counter here. Yeah. It's uh, Antonio Nusa running down the wing. Nusa going inside. Shooting from distance and hitting the crossbar. Let's have a look at this again. So Nusa goes inside, he cuts inside, shoots from outside the box and hits the crossbar. Menu on the charge once again here yeah, now. Careful in defense. It's Hoyland who has been tormenting us for the whole game here. Skelderup into Alvarez. Careful! Oh my god, it's the equalizer for Manchester United. It is Garnacho in the 76th minute. Just look at the space this guy has. Outside of the box and then no one covers Garnacho. It's 3-all. Uh, what a game though. It's Antonio Nusa, the OG from, of course, Club Bruges, going inside, giving the ball into Boniface. No goal, but Bilal with the shot saved by Castile. Sick here to Skov Olsen. 
Good header by Konate. Good save by the goalkeeper. Rafa for Alvaro Fernandez. It's back to Rafa. Careful. Courtois with the save. But then what does he do there? First he saves. And then he misses the ball. And all the players are down. First Courtois saves it. Second shot. He cannot do anything about it. It is 4-3 to Man United. We go again. It is Victor Boniface to kick us off. Skovolsen. Sasha Bowie. It's a bit of a cricket game here. I'm not going to lie. And I wouldn't be surprised if we get one back immediately. It is really a cricket game. For all, Kevin De Bruyne. I can assure you guys that this is on ultimate difficulty, even if you wouldn't think so, looking at this. It's Alvaro Fernandez. Turns well here. Wants to go into the penalty box, but... Oh, he, does, uh, he does pass it into the box. It's Courtois with a big save. Still not over completely. What is that defending? I really defend like a Sunday league player. United could go on an attack. Can they? Will they break our hearts here? At the death of the game. Bisuma. The referee should blow now. Why doesn't he blow his whistle? Finally he does and it's a penalty shootout. We start off with Boniface in this shootout. He scores top, right, top left. Now Greenwood. Oh. He scores but Courtois nearly came... Onto it. It is El Canus against Castiles. Can he score? Yes, he does. Once again, goes left. Now, Matias Quinta. Next up, the captain of Manchester United. And once again, the goalkeeper goes the right way, but goes in. Kevin De Bruyne will do an audacious chip here. He does a Penenka. And it's 3-2. Now, Yugil. We go left this time, and Courtois does a save. Very important save. Skovolsen. Left or right? We go. Through the middle and the keeper saves. Now it's Licha Martinez. Licha scores. Manchester United are level. It's a very cagey penalty shootout. And Neves can bring us in front, but he doesn't. And United have the match ball through Yves Bisuma, who can bring them the crown. Yves Bisuma against Courtois. Courtois saves! We are still in the game. It's Antonio Nuza who has to score now. Nuza through the middle. Scores. Now, Lima, if he misses, it's over. I think so. It is Conrad Lima. Courtois just stands there watching the ball. What a prat. It's Sasha Bowie. Can he bring us back in front? No! Goes through the middle as well, and it is advantage United. Rafa, the Portuguese man. I'm in tears. I just cannot believe it. We were so close, yet so far. It's Manchester United, the Champions League winners in season number five. And that was the deciding penalty by Rafa. Fair play, Manchester United. Courtois jumping like a giraffe, not catching any balls here. But what I have to say, it has been a fantastic game. De Bruyne is now 37, very old. De Bust is maybe the weakest link with his 81 overall. But otherwise, this team is just genius. We have Van Aken, who has retired now from football. So uh, De Bruyne and El Canuza are our only camps. I have also gone and just changed the formation here to a 4-3-3 on defend once again because that is how the team is balanced the most and may, that may have caused us some problems last season. So back to square one in terms of the formation. Björn Meyer's release clause had been made of 50 million from Bergamo Calcio. So he will leave us here and now. It is Magnus Lindquist joining VfB Stuttgart for 23 million. It is the former Benfica left back, now from Bayer Leverkusen.
joining us for 46 million from the German club. He's 32 years of age, but of course he's an 86 rated left back. The second player into the club here in the sixth season is a centre back. As I said, we needed an upgrade on that position. He's a left sided centre back. He's only 27 years of age. He's joining us from Bergamo Calcio in this save for 90 million. It is Gonzalo Inacio. It is a Belgian player, Malik Fofana, joining us from Brighton for 54 million as a rotational player. At the left side of the defense, two big improvements in Inacio, 26 87, and Grimaldo, 32 86, both into the club, as well as Fofana here on the bench, 23 years of age, 83 overall already. So a big improvement on, of course, Talbi, our former rotational left winger, plus six on him. 4 million as we just didn't need him anymore. We're selling Chemsdin Talbi to West Ham for 16.7 million. It is Real Sociedad, Arsenal from England and Porto from Portugal, our opponents in Group H in a group of death, I'd say, in the Champions League. Group H, the group of death, very narrowly ahead of Royal Sociedad and FC Porto. What a group, actually. Five points between first and last. We will be facing Atletico Madrid. Simeone's men travel to Belgium. That's going to be interesting. We are actually running away with the league so far. 15 wins, 7 draws, 0 losses after 22 games. Into the first leg against Atletico Madrid. At home, we have a full strength starting 11. Can we get a first edge? In this game, it's a two-all draw. We come back from 2 nil down. Canus and Boniface save something for us. The second leg in Madrid at the Estadio Metropolitano on the 14th of March 2029. Two-all is the scoreline. But the question is, can we prevail away to Atletico? We quick sim the game. And we win on penalties. Oh my God. What a game. One all after 120 minutes, Boniface brought us in front. Keen gave them the equalizer. Nothing happened in extra time. But then Alex Garcia, with the last penalty, saved or missed. And we prevail and go through to the quarterfinals of Champions League in season number six. Stamford Bridge to face Chelsea on the 11th of April with our full strength start in 11. Can we get something out of London? That is the question here. The answer is yes. We've actually won this game. But yes, a red card to Chiesa has helped us a lot. He scored for them to give them the lead. But Nusa equalized Skowolsen and then Grimaldo with the dagger to give us a very, very comfortable lead going into the second leg. But on this game, if we get into the game and we win 2-0, we've obliterated Chelsea here. No fear at all. Konate and Derrida with the goals to sink Chelsea in the quarterfinals and send Club Bruges once again to the semis. We'll play good old friends from Italy, AC Milan, and the first leg will be at San Siro. We will be without Ruben Neves, who's been red carded. We have replaced him with Romeo Lavia. Let's simulate the game here at San Siro. And it's a two-all draw. We get away with a draw here. Canus and Nusa scored the goals for us. A historic opportunity here in the semi-finals to go to back-to-back -to -back UCL finals. The question is if we can grab this opportunity. We'll be without our centre-back Inas, who has been red-carded from the first leg. We quick sim the game. Take a deep breath, lads. We are counting down from three. Three, two, one. Let's go here. We quick sim the game at home. We win 2 1, and we are back to back in UCL finals. What an achievement. Marcus Leonardo missed the pen for Milan. Loftus Cheek brought them in front. Nusa and Canus scored the goals for us. We turned the game around. We have topped the league here at the end. Of the regular season in season number six, 10 points ahead of Underleg and 12 ahead of Royal Union Saint Gilloise. 
is in a championship run where we have also topped our group in flying colors, actually. 13 points ahead of Royal Union Sand and 15 ahead of Kaya Siegang. So we are, once again, the Belgian Pro League champions. We had a ropey start here against Mechelen. 7-6 on penalties we won in round 1. In the quarters, we overcame Open 4-2. And in the semis, we overcame, we in fact destroyed Gang 6-2 to reach the final against Underlecht, so a chance to fulfill the treble here in season number six. Only face once again at top with 21 goals. Nusa in second, 17. Ileni Kena, always the same four here. Ileni Kena in third, 15. And Skowolsen also with 10 goals, up to an 89 overall. We have, we have even added some youth players, Mikkel, Martens, Willems. A few very, very interesting youth players. This is a fantastic squad. No player in this overall, no player in this starting 11 is under the overall of 85. We have two players in Onyedika and Grimaldo, but all the others, most of them in fact, over the overall of 86, 87. We've already won the league. Can we now follow up with a Belgian Croaky Cup win? Yes, we do. We win 2 1. Konate and Boniface score. Phillips gave them, or Flips gave them, the equaliser. But that wasn't enough, because our marksman, Boniface, once again came in clutch for us. And in the Champions League, it is Napoli, very interesting game, against Club Bruges, on the 2nd of June, 2029. Ruben Neves ah, doesn't get it past here, doesn't get it through. Now Napoli, can they take advantage of the open space here? Kudus with a great ball into Baturina, he already scores, we are already behind. After just 10 minutes, oh my lads, oh my. Look at this, just too much open space here. Kudus with a great pass and Baturina with the composure. It's 1-0 to Napoli, we have to strap ourselves in. We have the ball here through El Canus, who brings it in for Victor Boniface. Victor Boniface gets dragged outside, but plays a good ball for Bowie. Bowie, good ball inside, it's the equalizer. What a ball, what a cross here by Sasha Bowie, our right back. And El Canus. We have a vital equalizer here. He heads it past Livakovic in goal to bring us level turns. Very early doors. Inacio into Onyedeka. It's uh, Victor Boniface here. Good shot, good save by the keeper. Oh, now we get a corner kick. Good corner goal! How did that even go in here? I don't know. I have no idea. Only thing I do know is that Victor Boniface gives us the lead here. We turned the game around. What a header. Ivakovic doesn't look good here. But we don't care. Grimaldo with a powerful set piece, with a powerful corner. Could have been a, a known goal even here. On the line cleared by Livramento. But into his own net. We defend very well here. But still not half time. Grimaldo does well, then fouls Retegi, and then Bata Baturina goes on one on one with Courtois and equalizes. Two all just before half time. <sighs> Baturina just, yeah, like a superstar, like a little Messi, turns up the speed. And no problem for him. Good recovery of the ball here. It's El Canus, one on one with the keeper. Scores! We are up once again here. For the second time in the game, it's 3 2 to Club Bruges. Finally, they crack. 
good play, wonderful play by Boniface, sees Canut, and he just coldly passes the ball past Livakovic to make it 3-2 to Club Bruges at Napoli. But now, let's not talk too much. Let's see what Paturina does. He's the magical player. Gives it into Retegi. Retegi with a good trickery and it's 3-3. We just cannot defend to save our lives. Now Napoli once again. We have to be careful of uh, Stanislas Lobotka. Who at his dinosaur age is still playing good football. It is uh, Joe, uh, Joe, uh, Joe Bellingham. But we win the ball back. And now Ruben Neves loses the ball again him here. It is Anthony Gordon. The English connection here with Bellingham, Gordon at Napoli. But now, let's not talk too much. Let's see what Paturina does. He's the magical player. Gives it into Retegi. Retegi with a good trickery and it's 3-3. We just cannot defend to save our lives. Now Napoli can go again. Retegi who just scored against Konate. I think, ooh, that could have been a second yellow. But I don't think it is. But still could be, still could be. It's not a yellow card. Oh my god. Such a lucky moment for Onyedika. He's already on a yellow here. Just look at it. Ooh. I've actually subbed out three players. First off, Debast for a very tired Konate. Second up, it is Ilinekena for a tired Boniface. And third, of course, the yellow card it Onyedika has been replaced by Romeo Lavia. We do well here. Oh, what, a, what an intervention here. It is El Canus. Canus. Good save. Rimaldo bringing in the corner. Good corner. It's Canus once again. Whoa, what a shot. It's a Max Merding. Careful. Good save again by Courtois. But they lose the ball. Very sloppy they play. Just like us. Holds the ball up. It's the last two minutes. It's stoppage time already. Good ball here. Inside! How is this for real? It's the second minute of added time. It's George Ilenikena. With the dagger here. George, our boy. He seems to have given us the Champions League trophy here. Just let's look at it again. It's Romeo Lavia with an incredible master pass. And Ileni Kena with a very composed finish with his weak left foot passes Livakovic and it's 4-3 and Rebil Sombrero is very very close to securing yet another Champions League trophy. This could be it and this is it immediately the ref blows the whistle and Club Bruges after six seasons have done it. They have won the UCL. We have built an incredible team. We came so, so close last season where we agonizingly missed out. But now this season, against Napoli, against the Italian Giants, it is Club Bruges' time to shine. But lads, if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to the channel, liking the video, and also tell me in the comments what else you'd like to see next. It's Rebuild Sombrero. I let you enjoy the title celebrations because Ruben Neves, our club captain, is lifting the UCL trophy for Club Bruges for the first time in their history. I'm out. Enjoy the rest of your day and enjoy the celebrations. Club Bruges are the Champions League winners.